Hi, welcome to how to create your own search part four. We're going to go over how to create a table based on clicking these checkboxes. It's going to look like this where we click the checkboxes and our table builds to the right. If you have any questions or you want me to send you this file, just email me at xlsxgeek at gmail.com. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get our developer tab onto our list of Excel options up here. We're going to go to Excel options in popular show developer tab in the ribbon. So check mark that, click OK, and there's our developer tab. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our developer controls, we're going to insert, and then it's going to give you two options for the check mark. We're going to select form controls and put it right there. We're then going to edit what it says. And then the next thing we're going to do is format the control. So we're going to right click. We're going to go format control. And this is very important. We're going to create a cell link. I like to put the cell link to the right. I'm going to put it over here. And what that's going to do is it's going to return a true or false depending on whether it's checked. So, so if I click on that check mark it gives me a true. Unchecked, it gives me a false. I can't just copy and paste it. I actually have to go back in, go into Format Control, and then change this to E12. So, And for these checkboxes, you're just going to have to do that for every one you want to do. So now that all your checkboxes are in, and they have their individual cell links, we're going to do conditional formatting. So just going to highlight that group of cells and we're going to go to conditional formatting and this works much the same in Excel 2010. I'm going to go new rule and go use a formula to determine which cells to format because we're not formatting these cells based on their values, we're formatting these cells based on another cell's values. So we're going to go this, I'm actually going to make that just a horizontal absolute reference equals true. So that's like saying if that equals true. Okay. So as you can see, all everything that was check marked now has that conditional formatting. So we have our selections made and that will give us and based on those selections we're going to build our table. So now we're going to get into the first part of that and the first part of that includes an if function right here right to the left of this it's actually already in there so I'm going to get rid of that equals if this equals true our value if true is going to be max and we're going to look at the cells before we're going to make one permanent so A10 through A10 and then make the first A10 an absolute cell reference. The second A10 not an absolute cell reference. We go max plus one and our value if false will be double quotation or null. So I'm gonna drag that formula down and what that's gonna do is just create our index. It's just gonna give us this uh, VLOOKUP index for us to build the first parts of our table. So the next thing we're gonna do is Create our lookup values right here. And since we only have six checkboxes, I'm just going to bring it up to six. And we're going to put our VLOOKUP, so it's going to be equals VLOOKUP. Our lookup value is going to be our index as usual. Our table array is just going to be, I'll drag it down in case we want to get, uh, add more checkboxes and our column index number will be three because it's three columns over. False and let's see what how that does. Okay, so that brings us the first part of our table. So I'm going to add an error correction and I'm going to drag that value down. Okay, so that is the beginning of our table. So we're going to put our column header and our column header is going to be a formula because we want it to disappear if nothing's checked. So if this equals null, 
our value if true is null, and our value if false is going to be our C7 cell. So now we're going to create a column index for our table. We have to go back into our data tab. We're going to add a function. The function's already here, but I'm going to write it out with you. I'm going to go if this B2 is equal to this D3 cell, we're going to not include it into our columns. So we're basically creating this uh, index that'll bring us our column names. So we're going to go if this value, B2, is equal to mid, we're just do, using this mid function to pull this D out of D2. Text, our start number is 2, our number of characters is 1. If the value is equal, it equals nothing. If it's not, we're going to do something similar as we did before, where we can go count C1 through C1 plus 1. And we're going to make one of these cells a permanent reference. So it's an expanding range. Okay, it's going to give me a warning because I didn't do a parenthesis sign. I'm going to go yes. I'm going to drag this across, and that is going to give me my column header index. We're going to create our columns based off those numbers. And the reason we want to do that is, again, because we're able to switch this. So if we're able to switch this to company, this has got to change, and so do these columns. Okay, so now we're going to do our index numbers, much like we do for VLOOKUPs. We're going to just do it with an HLOOKUP. We're going to go 1 through 10. We're going to go equals HLOOKUP. This is our value. Our table array is back on the data tab. So our table array is going to be here through here, F4, comma, 2, comma, false. So that brings us our dynamic names right there. So I can actually go, there's actually 11 columns, so if I add that, I drag this one more over, it should work perfectly. So the next thing we're going to do is actually just pull this down one, just keep it even with the other one. So I just did control cut copy and paste. The next step is to create a reference for our match formulas. So uh, this isn't actually going to make too much sense right now, but we're going to go equals, and we're just going to put quotations, data, which refers to our other tab, and J8, just right there, and 1, and quotations, quotations, colon, quotations, and J8 again, and we're going to put uh, value in J8, that'll make sense. And we're just going to go 10,000. So right now it's D1 through D10,000, so if I go to J8, I'm actually just going to make it equal to data, and this is our, if you recall from our last videos, our cell that picks out the um, column that we're looking through, so I'm going to go equal to E. So we've actually used that a couple times, and it's going to bring us this data E1 through E1000. And you'll see why that makes sense with our next formula. Our next formula is going to be a match function. Our match function is actually right here. I ended up pasting it there. So right here we're going to go equals match. Our lookup value is going to be J10 or Daniel C. Tanny Inc. Our lookup array is going to be indirect. And the reason we're doing indirect is because our columns change. So we're going to go indirect. It's actually going to be I7 because that's where I put it. And I'm going to make that a absolute reference. Close parentheses, comma. Our, this is our match type for the match. We're going to go 0, so an exact match. And what this will do is bring up the row number. So this is looking through that other sheet. It's finding the exact row where this value lives and returning it. And the reason we're going to need that is because we're going to use that in our indirect functions here. So originally I wanted to show you the offset method of creating these, uh, creating these tables. But because we're low on time and we've already used up so much time, 
I'm just going to show you a simpler way. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another HLOOKUP right here. So I'm going to copy this up here. Equals paste. It brings me a D, so I'm going to get rid of the mid function. Okay, so it brings me D2. So if we go back to our data tab, I've actually included these column functions right below this address function. So what column does, it just returns the number of columns over from the start. So in column D, we have four, in column E, five, and so on and so forth. So we're just doing an HLOOKUP that looks up the number one value here, or number two, or three, or four, depending on the column and it's just going to return this value of columns. So I'm just going to go, instead of three, I'm going to change that to four. I'm going to drag that across. And I know this is starting to look like a matrix and a little obnoxious, but it's going to make sense. So in this one, I'm going to go equals indirect. And this is a lot simpler than this offset function, which is the original thing I was going to show you. but uh, it's a little bit complex and we're a little low on time. I'll paste it into the info. So if we go equals indirect, our reference text is going to be, we're going to type in data, exclamation point, quote, use your and, and then we're going to go We're going to go address. Our row number is going to be 903. Our column number is going to be 4. And if we close that off, it should return the name. And if we look at Daniel C. Tanny, Caesar Ruffin, we can see if that works. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is because this formula is going to be both dragged vertically and horizontally, we need to change the way these address function works. So we're going to just go F4, F4 again, and F4 one more time because we're going to do a horizontal reference here. And then this one we need a vertical reference. So we're going to just go F4, F4. So we have that dollar sign in the middle and that brings us our vertical reference. So now what we can do is we can actually drag this down and dragged across. And so I'm going to include an if error so we don't have those obnoxious value signs. Comma null. And if you drag it down and drag it across. Okay, so let's check our work. Let's go see if Daniel C. Tanny is the company that Caesar Rufin works. Let's see. So we can already tell that this column matches with this column because you can see it's www.caesarruffin.com. This one's www.clarkstrothman.com. So let's just make sure that the company name matches the first and last. If we go back to our data tab. Okay, so here's our Caesar Ruffin, and the next column over, which is company name, is Daniel C. Tanny. So it worked. So now we can test it. It seems to work. We can change our company to uh, anything we want, really. So if we change it to first and last, we can see that the first and last switch with the company name. So now if we have Dana Crimes, it matches with Merrifold. So every time you switch this or you run this, this is going to change. And so that concludes part four of how to create your search. In the next video, we're going to show you how to weight your search. So we're going to add values to our data sets, and we're going to say uh, add more weight to value or add more weight to search. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. So thank you for watching, and please subscribe.